From now on, through the end of the class, you will using the other Consign Two Sixty project. That will be the Chapter Five project. So that project will help you to link to the Urban Thirty Two library. So this video, the most important thing is I want to show you how to set up your home system to run the Urban Thirty Two library using our Consign Two Sixty Chapter Five project. To run the new project, the same thing you need to go to the demo file. Uh, from the demo file, go to the Visual Studio project. Before we using Chapter Three, so now we need to use the Chapter Five. So the lab computer at school they using the two thousand nineteen. So we download two thousand nineteen. So the same thing, like we say, if you have the file project you download right, please make sure after you click on that, they are not. Unzip yet, so make sure you go back to the download. So here is your chapter five zip file. So right click extract all to make sure you extract all the project. So then you do see the project folder. Then you see you go down to find chapter five the solution file. So then we will run another chapter five project. So you see here they say yes. Ah, uh, so we just say okay. We open the project. So then, after you open the project, you will see here. Okay, so by default, they have the Urban Thirty Two template, but still, this file cannot be run yet. Okay, on the lab computer, you can, but here, I just want you to make sure you will download this project on zip, then you will see this one, but do not run yet because you are not ready, because in the lab computer, if you go to your C, Windows C. Okay, so under your C drive, okay, under your C drive, you will see you have a Irvine directory. So this Irvine directory, we already download to the lab computer. In your computer, maybe you don't have that yet. So that's why I want to show you how to copy over your Irvine directory. So you can see Irvine directory will have many things. Okay, so they have some example. But the most important thing, remember that's under the C drive, under the Irvine, you will see the exam, the exam, the example, and also other file. I will show you more in the next um in the Tuesday's video. But here is your Irvine. You need to get ready. How to get the Irvine? So the same thing. Let's go back to our demo file. So the same location you see here under the Visual Studio project, you have the Irvine.zip file. So the same thing. Download this zip file. After you download this zip file, the same thing. I want you to unzip that. So after it's checked, all right. Okay. So that's on your home system. You download this one. So after you download, you see here. After you extract, you need to be careful. After you extract this one, you have Irvine. Okay. But here, be careful. It's under Irvine. They have another Irvine. Ah,、uh, so that's you need to be careful. Okay, if they look like this, right? Okay, so what you need to do is, I want you to go to the second folder. You go up to here, the first folder. Under the Irvine folder, you have this folder. Because one thing is, need to make sure only one level the Irvine. I want you to using this one. Okay, Irvine folder underneath. They are have the chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, all those, uh, file we need. Okay, only from this folder. Okay, so then from your computer system, you are in download, right? You just move to your C drive. Um,、uh, but now I cannot move the C drive because uh, in the lab computer we already have that. So make sure this Irvine folder move to the C drive, just right on the C drive. Okay, so that's cancel. Okay. So make sure you are. Oh, yeah, they already. What where they move? Yeah, I think I accidentally moved to somewhere. But the most important thing I want you to see is here, under your C. If you down, you will have Irvine, Irvine directory. Right away, you need to see you have those Irvine thirty two dot nc file. That's the most important thing. The reason is in the project. Okay, how do we access Irvine thirty two? Because under the project. Here, we tell them the additional library dependent. We show in my project. Okay, so in my project, 
we have screenshot in the PowerPoint file, but let me show you from the project. After you open the project, Consign 260 Chapter 5. Because by default, this one I already, you go to the property. I already set up. Uh, so after you have the property, go to the linker, general. So you will see additional library directory. We define, we already define it's under C drive Irvine. So if you have multiple level for your Irvine 32, so then they won't recognize. So make sure you will have the Irvine directory. Just move to your C drive. Okay, so after we're done, right? Okay, so if you're done, so like your lab computer uh, from your home system you down, so then you will see, yeah, they will display like this. But this one just the default file I gave you, that's the urban32template.asm file. Let me use this one to talk about a little bit. So the reason is earlier we add the urban directory is we include the urban32.inc file. So this include urban32.inc file. Very similar like C++, we try to include any header file. So then after you include this urban32.inc, so then they have many useful procedures developed by our textbook writer. So then here you will see in your main procedure, then you want to call any procedure defined in the Irvine 32 library. We just using the code instruction. So then you see you call dump regist, you call write hex, you call the new line. So that's why they will just run the program. Then you have output. But of course, in the Thursday video, I will show you more about each procedure. But one thing here, I just want to make sure you will have your project installed correctly so you can run your chapter five project. So then after you can make sure your project run fine with Urban32 library. So then I want you to remove this file. Okay, so earlier we say we already have under the download, we download the update, updated reverse string SM file. So let's add this one to our project. So you add existing item, okay, from the download. Okay. Uh, so this one actually is the updated reverse string ASM file. So this one is I want to show you. We add urban32.inc include in this file. Because earlier when we tried to reverse our Abraham Lincoln byte string line, we only can use the memory window to display. But now here I want to show you two procedures from the urban32.inc. So the first one you see here. Then you have one procedure called write string. So this procedure called write string. Before that, you need to put your array. So write string actually is display the string in the console. So which string you want to display? You just need to save their memory address into the EDX. Okay, so that's by default when Urban32 library, they implement write string. They always expect they will read the EDX value to read the string one by one. So if you move this string array into the EDX, then you call write string. They will display the content from that byte array on, into the screen. So after you display right, so that's the write string. So then the CRLF just mean the new line. So each procedure, you just do the code space, then the procedure name. So here we will display the original byte string on this console. So then after what you will see, we already have the a name defined as before, like our reverse string SM file. So we just add this full line. For our updated reverse string. So then you will see here, this one is still the same, the first loop is still the same. We have the ECX as counter, ESI is the index. So then we just push all the character into the stack. So then your second loop, the same thing as before. 
you have ECX as country, ESI as index. Then we just pop from the stack and copy over the value into the uh, uh, name. Uh, so into the our byte string. So right, so we finish right. So good. So after you finish, you want to display your output again, right? Again, before you call write string, you will have your offset for that byte array into the EDX. So then we call write string. They will display on the console. So then you display, you need a new line, right? So then we just call CRLF. So that's our update reverse string. So this one we will include urban32.inc file. You see that's here. Okay. So then afterward, you see now if we just start without debugging, you will see your string display in the console. So that's the first procedure I want to show you. So after you successfully set up your Urban32 Chapter 5 project, you add your Urban directory. So then you can access your Urban32.inc file. So the first procedure we show you is write string. So they will write a byte array on the console. Here is the write string procedure. So they will display a no terminate string and move the cursor to the beginning of the next screen line. So before calling the procedure, you see edx point to the string location. So that's why you see here is another example. I have a string that's a byte array. Say assembly language is easy. So then before you call write string, you need to have your offset for this byte array into the edx. So then they will display like this. So this one is what we show you in the re update reverse string.sn file. So the next one, before you do your lab exercise, I want to show you another procedure. You write string to the console, right? So also you can read string from the console. So the next procedure I want to show you is we call read string procedure. This one will, you were using for your lab SSI 7. So they will get an input string from the user. So that's why in order to read from the user, right, you need to have a empty byte array defined. So for example, we call file name, that's a byte. That's have the size is 80. So then you see here, we can prompt to the user, say, please enter the file name. So in order to display the prompt, we need to have the prompt string move to edx. So I call write string. So that's why they, how they display. So now how to read, right? So now we need to read, right? So now when you read the string, your edx point to the string and ecx specify the maximum number of the character. So on the other hand, before you call read string, edx need to point to the file name. ecx equal to 80 because that's the maximum number. So after you're done, the EAX will return you the count of the number of character typed by the user. So that's why here, you see here is our read string. But before you call read string, you need to have two information ready. One is EDX. So that's why it's offset for the file name where we will save our user input. So then your ECX. ECX, you can see here is 80 or it's better we're using the size of for the file name, that's your byte string to expect to read from the user. So then after you have edx, ecx ready, you call read string. So then you see afterward, they will have your test.asn read into the file name. But in order to show you did read correctly, right? So that's print again. So that's why after you have your old file name being saved for the test.asm file. So then you save to edx again. So we call write string. So the second test.asm actually just confirm your result. You did read correctly from the user input. So the first test.asm is from the user input. So the second one actually is because we display the file name content in edx and we call the write string. So that's the two procedure you will need for your lab exercise 7.